Big in Africans. What is it about? What is it about? It's about, about it's it. The idea is to show um, how people here have more complex stories than it what that well no none than anywhere else I think everybody has complex stories I just think people think about uh, the conflict here as being very simplistic what do you want to ask so okay so I'll ask you about your um, your your past your sort of past you were born in South Africa I know it's a parrot you were born in South Africa no I was born in Israel oh you're born in Israel sorry Yes, and then you moved to South Africa because your mother is South African. My mother is South African. And your dad father is Israeli. and your dad is Israeli. And your mother is South African, Ashkenazi Jew. Yes. Uh, from what, like heritage? Latvia. Latvia. Yeah. Okay. Latvia. And your father is Palestinian, who Her converted to. Well, he is five generations in Israel. I don't know if you would call it Palestinian. Okay. What do you mean, five generations from where? From Egypt. Oh, from Egypt. Originally. I didn't know this. Um, yeah, and then he's got ten brothers and sisters. Okay, and where did he grow up? He grew up in Kfalkala. Okay, and do you have any idea why he converted to Judaism? Well, from what I know is that he wanted to. He went to an Israeli school, mm -hmm. and all his friends were Israeli, and he just wanted to just become. He didn't like the 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 the. the, the um, the life of the country and the that kind of lifestyle of having you know ten wives and all that stuff. So he just he didn't like that whole side. He wanted to be Israeli, Jewish Israeli, and he had a girlfriend who's Jewish. Mm -hmm. So he started converting already back then. And then he met my mother. Split up with the girlfriend, met my mother. He met your mother here? He met my mother here. My mother made Aliyah from South Africa and uh, she didn't speak a word. So she he helped her move uh, some luggage the one day, something from one kibbutz to the other, you know. Very nice. <laughs> and uh, so, and there was no, no words, no interaction or anything, but they just kept going on dates, and somehow they got together. Okay. So she didn't know that he was Arab, <clears throat> and um, then uh, when they were already living together, one day she does the washing and she pulls out his ID and she opens it up so she sees his name and whatever and then she looks and she sees because the nationality is there and it said Muslim so a nice Jewish girl from South Africa she almost fainted because her whole you know point of coming to Israel was to find a nice Jewish boy so that didn't happen but it was they were ready to get so wait, but I thought he converted or he didn't convert no he hadn't converted yet oh okay so then they started, then they went off to Cyprus to get uh, married at mm -hmm. some stage. I don't exactly know the, the order, the sequence of things, but they, they went off to Cyprus to get married. And meanwhile, my dad was doing lessons with the chief rabbi of Israel at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, they were making it very difficult back in the early 70s to convert, especially for Muslims, because why would, why would they want to do that? And... So, so they came, they went, they got married in Cyprus, civil wedding, they came back to Israel at the conversion, which was a bit of a hectic thing. And then they got married in Israel. Kedat Moshe Israel. Interesting. And that's How did his family react, as far as you know? Well, as far as I know, they weren't too happy about it, but they were more open-minded about it. Like, they didn't, he wasn't shunned out of his heritage, his family. They still kept kind of. They still we still kept in touch with the family, so they didn't try and kill anyone, or it wasn't one of those crazy stories, you know. Axed them down, and my mother said that his mother said, "Whatever makes my son happy makes me happy." And how did your mother's family react? Well, my mother's father, he was the only one. My mother passed away when she was younger. He was like, he didn't want to hear about it. He you know, there was letters and he's like, he's coming to Israel to take her back. And that cannot be. So he wasn't too happy about it, of course. But my mother was a rebel all her life. So he kind of, I think, at least it's not like a, a major shock. And so, and then he got to know him. And then eventually when we moved to South Africa to live there, so at some stage when my parents split, my dad was uh, staying with my grandfather and they 
very close, very close. Oh, your mother's father? Yeah. Okay. So and they were got very close it. and to the point that my dad's, my grandfather actually passed away. My dad was already living somewhere else and he used to come and visit him often. And he actually passed away in his hand, his arms. Wow. Yeah, so they were very close. That's, uh, and what's the story? You told me that when you moved back to Israel at one point, you were living in, in Lud. Uh, we in, were living in Lud when uh, we were building a house. We, were building, we still were living in Israel, we were building a house. And then uh, we had to kind of vacate the one house, wait for the other one. And so we, lived, we moved in with my dad's family, which mm -hmm. lived in Lud. So we were there for like a year and a half or something like that. And they lived in the good part of the They Lud. lived in the good part, actually, <laughs> not in the... Not in the um, well, they did. Oh, okay, I thought it was did. being they sarcastic. Actually, yeah. No, 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 they're a very respected family. Mm -hmm. They lived in... Uh, of Lud. <laughs> they lived in Shkunat um, HaPachonim. Well, it's a neighborhood behind the, this neighborhood, which is like shacks. Mm -hmm. But they had land, they've got a big land, and they were busy. Oh, okay. So you used to, because I remember you telling me you had to walk through well, we the had drug to dealers. Walk um, well, not really drug dealers, but the, the, the actual tin neighborhood. Okay. The shacks. Sorry. So obviously there was no like sewage into infrastructure there or anything. But we had all of that because they were just living quite well. But still, it's a whole other setup, you know, you, you, the whole surroundings, the population is very different. And us living, building a house in Kuchav Yair, which is like really up, up market kind of, and going to school there every day and coming back to the neighborhood, you can just imagine the two different worlds. Yeah. Kind of, you know, it's almost like Pretty saying, surreal. I study in Savion, but I live in uh, Lod, or I live in Shkunat uh, Tikva. Yeah. So there was always that kind of crazy thing to handle. Despair, yeah. which is weird. Okay. And are you in contact with any of your father's family? Well, every few years. Like I'm in touch every few years. Um, you said you found a, a cousin or something, uh, a young a student yeah. who moved to Jaffa and contacted you. Yeah, we met. Actually, and she was now in, in Cape Town, she met with my dad, and she's very sweet, actually. Uh, and every so often, every few years, it's kind of like, um, we get in touch somehow. But, um, I don't know, we just haven't, I think I'm still not sure what to do about that whole setup. We'll Why? See. Why? Because it's, first of all, I don't speak Arabic, so I'm not sure that I, I do feel welcome and I do feel like, you know, it's perfectly fine, but sometimes I don't exactly know. I can't read between the lines. I don't understand if, you know, there's a vibe or what's going on. I'm not sure if there's a vibe with my father and the family, so this made me feel uncomfortable. So, but he's coming in August. Oh, I finally get to meet him? <laughs> you get to meet him? Uh, your mother. I haven't met him. You met my mother? Yep. Yeah. So he's coming in August. Um, and he's, yeah, we'll be going to the village. I'm very happy about it because I want to try and get back to the whole. Can I come along? The whole vibe. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's the roots. We shall see the roots get back to the So, and, and just, and you also, you served in the army? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No, I came back to Israel, I was 21. That's oh. when the girls finished the army, so there was really no... Okay, I but your brothers did. You have three brothers. Three brothers served in the army. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did they have any issues with serving in the army? Like any... Not at all. Okay. Um, not at all. It's more like on a personal level. No, that's what I mean. Identity issues, meaning they're thinking, okay, I'm technically the enemy is part of who I am, in a sense. Yeah, I don't know. I never discussed it to them. I've got one brother who's in complete denial. Mm -hmm. One brother is completely indifferent, mm -hmm. and one brother is completely proud about it. Mm -hmm. So he's like very different, you know, act, going off in different directions completely. So I don't think they saw it that way, kind of fighting against the enemy, which is me, kind of. You know? mm -hmm. But I don't know, it's disgusting. It's one of those things we don't really talk about, actually. Okay, anything else you want to add?
Um, I think that's it. It's an interesting life. Not not easy. I, I would I would say I wouldn't recommend to kind of mix out of uh, your own religion, but I've done it. We've done it again. So. Yeah, your your boyfriend is not Jewish. My boyfriend is Italian Christian. Christian. <laughs> Living and, here. No, no, he's not really Catholic. Yeah, he's living in Israel, so that's that's a whole other story. So our kids are going to be very interesting. Uh, exactly. Breed. Good luck.